If seeing these parts offends you, be sure to hit that like button. See, a lot of guys are wondering, why in the heck aren't I transferring all the parts from the DXP car over to what I bought as a donor car? And I've kind of already addressed it. But of course, I'm happy to talk about it again. Guys, I am Sam Craig. This is the disgustingly dirty donor Chevy Spark. That's a good name, the disgustingly dirty donor Spark. Check this out, guys. Look at, whenever I took the parts out, all of the grass, dirt, dust, debris, all the stuff that washes up in a flood all came out on the ground. I'm gonna clean that out. That's why I got a blower right there. But I've got a really great reason why I'm actually tearing apart the donor car that you guys saw it works pretty well to use on the DXP car. I actually have a few reasons. But before we discuss all that, we need to get these parts right here painted white. They're obviously silver right now. If we look at some of the takeoff parts here, you can see that they're painted white and they've got black wrap, they've got red wrap, they have blue wrap. So I have a few plans whether I'm going to either wrap the colored stuff, whether I'm gonna paint it, whether I'm gonna plasti it, but I haven't decided on that yet. But one thing I do know is that the base color of these needs to be the same white that is the base color of the DXP car. Let's get in the car, let's hop on the road. As you can tell, I'm here at a body shop. It's a good friend of mine that owns this body shop. Now, I brought him the parts to the Chevy Spark or to the DXP car to get the front end uh, pretty much just redone in white. Now, a lot of you guys are not a fan of that. You wanna see me go ahead and paint them. However, there's a lot of things to keep in mind. A lot of people just think you go ahead and paint something and it's super easy. And when it comes to automotive paint and getting things right, you just gotta do it the right way. Here, let me take you to the paint booth and explain. Ooh. Is this an M? Is this a real M or is it just a... Huh? Is this a real M5? Yeah. Yeah? Nice, yeah. lot louder than I had anticipated and there were a couple guys working in there didn't want to bother them but there was a cool M5 in there hope you guys enjoyed seeing that uh, but I'm here at the auto parts store and we're gonna go through and kind of pick out all the items you would need if you were going to go ahead and spray this at home uh, using well just rattle cans and I know that's not ideal right but this is a $525 car on a more expensive car like say the Audi S3 or the Corvette I just bought I would never ever consider doing rattle cans, but it is something that a lot of people uh, have done, have shown on YouTube, and have been fairly successful in it. But this brand right here, that's kind of what it's meant for, is to touch up a panel or whatnot. It's not really a dual stage where you spray this and a clear coat, but of course, if I were doing it at home, uh, I would want to do it right and do it with the clear coat. So this is not, of course, the exact color, but we'll go ahead and grab that. And really, that's not enough to paint exactly what we need. So I'm going to grab a couple other cans here. So I'd get about three cans of white like we have here. And like I said, we're going to want to do a clear coat. So we'll come over here and grab, I'd say, two cans of clear coat because it doesn't need to be as heavy as the base color. And really, when you're doing rattle can paint jobs, I like to use an adhesion promoter. I think here they just have what? They have some primer. 
and one can is fine. You don't need a heavy amount of primer. So there's all of our paint here, but we're not done because of course there's gonna be a few imperfections on the panel. So we'll come over here. We need to definitely get some sandpaper. Not only will that help us uh, sand down any scuffs or anything like that, but like I said, the panel has a few blemishes on it. So let's get some of this Bondo. We just need this small tube here to fill in any uh, deeper scratches that would cause the paint to be uneven. And also if we have any dings or dents, we'll fill it in using that. We're still not done. We need to come over here grab a roll of tape let's see this one looks good here about the medium width and let's see anything else here i think that pretty much does it you see it's a lot more than just a couple cans of spray paint if you want to do a somewhat decent job now let's bring that all up to the register see how much it costs <laughs> $80 for all of that stuff at the auto parts store. Now I'm sure I've got the comment section going wild. What sort of hack are you? Nobody uses rattle cans. And actually that's not true, but I really don't like to use rattle cans ever. And really maybe you don't need all that stuff. Let's say that you go out to Harbor Freight, you already have a paint gun and your filters and things like that. You just need a quart or a few quarts of paint over at the Sherwin-Williams. You know, a lot of these automotive guys are using Sherwin-Williams paint. Well, that paint itself is very expensive. I've seen little containers of paint cost 50 to $100. If you get a specialty color, like the special blue that comes on the Golf R, I forget the name of it right now, but that costs $800 a gallon. I almost painted the money pit out of that color and I didn't want it to become more of a money pit, so I didn't end up buying that paint. But paint is actually very expensive. Now, could we have done just the rattle can job on the donor car parts? And the answer is sure we could have, uh, because again, it is a cheap car, $525. And it's white paint. White is probably the easiest color uh, to blend. But a big thing here is the fact that I am not skilled in painting things. I've tried it a few times, even just spray painting little projects. I always tend to have a heavy hand in one place. I will get runs in other place. It just always turns out to be a mess for me. Something I've never been particularly good at. So it's something I choose to pay someone to do. Maybe you guys are really good uh, with rattle cans. And if you are, go ahead, especially on an older car, if you wanna do a touch up yourself, I don't see anything wrong with it. The other issue is you see me out here, I'm in a uh, barn right now, things are dusty. If you let them sit for a few days, well obviously this car is already dirty, but I, I, there's dust all over the car. When you're painting things outside and in the elements, you're subject to the temperature. If it's too cold, the paint won't stick right. If it's too warm, it's gonna run a little bit more. You need to be prepared for all that. And these painters kind of know what they're dealing with. Not to mention, they have a spray booth. They're not outside. If I go ahead and start spray painting body panels outside, the second I get a slight little breeze, it's going to brush up a whole bunch of dirt debris onto that paint, which then means I need to sand it down, redo it again. Even if I do it in the garage, there's dirt and debris in there. Paint booths are kept super clean. The owner of that body shop, he pressure washes that spray booth about once a week to keep it immaculate so that there's no dust and dirt in it when he's painting his cars and so the jobs come out really well. So if you're still mad at me for taking the body parts away for paint, uh, I apologize but it's just something that I feel will come out better and make the car look that much better. It is going to cost me a little bit more but another thing you guys remind me about a lot is the time involved and when it comes to painting, prep is really the number one most time consuming thing. You got to sand the panels down, you got to clean them, primer them, and then you go ahead and you do your paint. There might even be some stuff in there that I forgot. You guys will let me know in the comment section below if I did. So a question I've been asked most while performing this rebuild is why don't you take the donor car and transplant the parts from the DXP car to the donor car? You've told us that the donor car works really well. You've shown that it runs and drives. We know that this car doesn't run and drive. We know that there's airbags deployed. As you see here, we've got not only the steering wheel airbag, we have the knee airbag on the driver's side that's been deployed. Uh, so there's a lot of work really to be done to this car. And this car, minimal work, right? Well, that's a great question. And first off, 
we want to go and look at this side, right? This is the side that counts on this car, the warming oven door. And a lot of people have suggested, well, just transplant it over to the donor car. Number one and the most important reason why, this car has a bad title. This car has a destruction title, which means that without a whole lot of legwork, you're never ever gonna be able to get it road worthy again. This was involved in Hurricane Irma, and as you guys have seen and wrote me tons of emails over the past month or so, uh, these flood cars are being labeled as parts, junk, scrap titles, and I'm pretty certain that's to try and discourage anybody in trying to fraudulently pass off these flood cars that, again, work really well, as clean title cars or something of the sort. That's major reason number one. So now you guys know uh, why I won't use this, but there's a few other reasons. Number two, as I've shown you guys, the interior of this car is filthy, it stinks, it's gross. Um, whoever owned it really kind of tainted it. Yeah, could I clean it? Sure. Uh, would that work? Probably. If you've ever been in a car with cigarette smoke odor, it's very difficult to get out. There are a few tricks, and I kind of want to do a video on that soon, but uh, that is one other reason. Another big reason is you see these the decals on this car, the custom emblems, uh, just stuff that would be really difficult to replicate. This is probably the coolest one. It's, it's highly reflective, high-intensity reflective logo. Uh, these sort of emblems would be really difficult. I mean, I guess you could take a picture of them and get somebody to print them for you. They're not going to be the same. It's just not going to be the DXP car. Not to mention, there is a good amount of wiring and customization on the interior of the DXP car. You can't see it because all the parts are in the way here, but this is the custom drink carrier and there's spots in there for pizza and sauce and all sorts of stuff. Here's the insulated oven box. I mean, it just really is kind of a special car. And since we can rebuild it, I figure that we will rebuild it. Now that the body panels are off the donor car, they're getting painted as we speak. It's time for us to either delve in further to the engine bay here and start transplanting the parts from the donor car to the DXP car, or we can go inside and start to disassemble the airbags and seat belts and repair those first. Let me know what you'd prefer to see in the comments section below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, if you feel that maybe you learned something, maybe about painting, maybe about car titles with the uh, donor car, definitely make sure you hit that like button. If you have any questions for me regarding this project, maybe you saw a car on Copart's website you're interested in, be sure to email me. Everything you need to do to contact me is in the description box below. Also, I've been taking a lot of pictures of this project while I'm working on it live. I upload them straight to Instagram. If you're not already following me there, go ahead and do so. Guys, thanks a whole lot for watching and I will catch you very soon.